Hi and welcome to my channel. Today's video is about prisons. So today the House of Lords are moving motions related to a bill that's currently going through our system of Houses of Parliament. It's called the Police Crime sentencing and courts bill and the particular amendment that we're concerned with today is amendment 97ZA. So when you look at that amendment it's about housing people according to their biological sex so high so housing male persons because Currently, what's happening is that there was some guidance issued that transgender prisons should be accommodated in the prison estate according to their target gender um, rather than their sex. And obviously, this has caused huge problems for women in prison who are one of the most vulnerable groups of women. Talk about intersectionality. This is the group of women we need to be worried about more than almost any other women. These women are vulnerable. They're survivors of extreme violence. 70% uh, of them are living with head, head injury due to trauma from male violence. Um, massive, massive numbers of self-harm. Um, and most of them are there because of socioeconomic circumstances. They're not a hugely violent population like the male prison population. Um, these women are mostly in prison for the non-payment of fines and one of the cruel and unusual punishments which is outlawed by the Geneva Convention is to house female persons alongside male persons because we recognise that the risk to those female persons of sexual violence and physical violence from those male persons is extraordinary and it's inhumane. It uh, wouldn't be within uh, the Geneva Convention to house prisoners of war according to their target gender. Um, it is only in line with humanitarian missions around the world and all human rights legislation until very, very recently that people are housed um, with other people of the same sex. Now, uh, because we've had this social movement in Western democracies whereby we now have these people who are identifying as something other than their sex, there is an issue in prisons because some are saying, you know, I, I'm so much weaker than other men, I've got breasts, which makes me a target of sexual attention from men. And so this amendment is a very... Um, clever and very compassionate because it recognises that there may be a group of male persons who need to be housed separately from the male population in prison, perhaps in their own wing or their own unit, but that these male persons with a cross-sex identification as women who may have had cosmetic surgery should absolutely not be housed in the female estate. So the work of Dr Kate Coleman, who campaigns tirelessly for the rights of female prisoners, is really important. And it was my absolute pleasure to see her on GB News shortly before I started editing this video. ...will be discussed today in the House of Lords, which asks for male prisoners to not be housed in women's prisons. One of the passionate speakers on this subject is Dr Kate Holman, director of Keep Britain Sing Prisons, Single Sex. Absolutely, and thank you very, very much for taking the time to join us. At what must be said was relatively short notice, Kate, so thank you, we do appreciate it. Um, look, how are you first and foremost, and please can you just kind of whiz our viewers through what's really going on here, what's happening? Right, so the situation with women's prisons in England and Wales through the MOJ policies is that some male prisoners, if they identify as transgender, so if they identify as female, provided that they meet certain criteria, they will be held in the female prison estate. 
This can include males who've been convicted of violent offences against women and girls, sexual offences against women and girls, and those who have intact male genitalia. Um, we believe that this is really just a quite an egregious use of the female prison estate and is using women either as human shields for their safety or to validate identity. Um, and that's what the amendment today seeks to change. Um, that if the law constrains the Ministry of Justice in making decisions to keep women in prison safe, then it's the law that has to change. Pullman, I mean, would you say that prisons should be single sex in all circumstances? I guess critics might say that transgender uh, women who have had uh, surgery or who have got the gender recognition certificate um, are also vulnerable and, and they should be in the prisons that are correspond to the gender that they identify and that would be putting them in female prisons. Right. Well, yes, we do believe that prisons should be strictly single sex. And I think we have to look at what is this about? Is this about safety or is this about validation of identity? Because the, the amendment that's being discussed this evening specifies that a third space should be made available for those minority of transgender male prisoners who identify as women and who cannot reasonably be kept safe in the male estate. We know from the Ministry of Justice data that the overwhelming majority of them are kept safe in the male estate. It's only a very small number who the risk assessment processes, the, M the MOJ believe, should be held with women. But we don't think that that's, that's really the right situation at all, because if it's about safety, if it's about the safety of this vulnerable group of male prisoners, then they shouldn't be housed with women. They can be kept safe separately. You know, this is about sex. This is about the importance of sex for safeguarding, for risk assessment. It's not an issue of minority gender rights. You know, the gender recognition certificate, it provides that somebody can have their acquired gender legally recognised. It's not changing sex. It's not an intention to replace sex with gender and it's not an intention to undermine the possibility of sex-based rights for women and i think it would be an absolutely extraordinary situation if we have to interpret the equality act which provides for the possibility of single sex spaces for females for women and for girls if we have to if we have to explain that we have to interpret that to render single sex spaces for females absolutely impossible if there's always some group of male prisoners for, for female prisons or other males who identify as transgender who have to be admitted to single sex spaces for women. I just find that extraordinary. The debate will be had in the House of Lords today and I don't have time um, to include the highlights of that debate in this video. I may put it in, a, in an upcoming video but there is a link where you can watch this debate live from 14.30 Greenwich Mean Time today. I hope you've enjoyed this video as ever. Um, it's great to see you back here. Thank you for coming and watching some more of my content. Do subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I welcome any likes or dislikes please leave your comment down below. I love to engage in a little bit of conversation with you and find out what you think about these issues. So thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again very soon.